So this is the node counter modulator. And this one is a bit hard to explain, even though it's, it's a simple modulator. And um, it takes in nodes. Every time you play a node, this one counts this node and tries to convert it into a modulation signal. And you can tweak how this behaves by different parameters in here. So let's say we dial in here, we have a maximum of five steps. And you can see we dialed in here five steps, but here we have four. Why is that? The thing is, um, the zero counts as one step. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, and um, this is basically the fifth step, right? So zero is one and four is five. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's that simple. So, um, you can dial in here the maximum number of steps so you can kind of create a resolution for the modulation signal and um, every time you play a note this one goes up and then we en end up on zero again because we reach the maximum number of uh, steps which is here three and we end up on zero again which is the first step. <laughs> um, so um, you can also increase here the increment number by two, for instance. So instead of every time you play a note, it goes up one step, you now go up two steps. So next one is two and zero. So the next one would be four, uh, but we have only three here. The next step is then zero. So the interesting part comes in when you have some odd numbers. So for instance, you count two up, but you have five steps. So this is interesting. We, we reset this here to, to zero or to, uh, yeah, it's, it's basically zero. And when we count now the notes, uh, let's see how this behaves. So the first step, now we in increase this by two, which is two. The next one should be four, right? So we don't end up on zero as uh, as we did before. Now we go two up, which is one this time. It's not two like the last time. Now we end up on three, and now two is over, go basically exceeds four, right? So we end up on one, I think, on zero. And then we have some kind of asynchronous, arrhythmic, kind of polyphonic uh, modulation so that only repeats on two iterations. So the first iteration is different than the second iteration and the third iteration is exactly the same iteration as the first one. So we have some overlapping or alternating uh, cycles of modulation signals, right? So keep this in mind. You can do this here much more fine grained if you go up with the steps. So let's say 20 and we go to three here. So let's, let's see how this looks like. And now three is over 19, right? We end up on one this time. Now next is two. So we have now three iterations that are completely different. So the first one ends up on different values than the, uh, the second one and the third one is also ending up on different uh, numbers here than the, than the first and the second one. So we have three, three different from, e from each other modulation signals on every cycle. And now we end up on zero again. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically the, the, the generic explanation for this. So you can use this modulator to create some kind of different cycles of modulations and interesting, um, yeah, interesting mod modulation sequences. Um, then we have here down below, we have the output scaling. And this is maybe easier to explain when I show you actually the, uh, the modulation signal, how it behaves. So we take here this modulator handle and modulate something. For instance, here this cutoff. And you can see, we can dial in how much we want to add modulation to this. So this is the modulation amount. And 
in the case of the no node counter or with every modulator, we have a scaling always from minus one to zero to one. So it's a bipolar signal, which goes in both directions, positive and negative. So zero, minus one and plus one. Or we have a unipolar signal, which goes only in the positive range from zero to one. And zero would be this position here, which is our knob currently in. This is the current state of the knob. So this is zero and plus one is the maximum uh, modulation amount, which is this white stroke here. And if you switch this to bipolar, like this one, it also goes in the negative range, which is, which is the opposite direction of this white arrow here. Maybe it should be nice to see this also here in the interface, how this um, would look like. Maybe this, this would be a nice feature request actually to uh, show this in the interface, uh, where the negative um, maximum value is, which would be here, right? So we can switch this from uh, unipolar to bipolar. And how this behaves is we have now tw 20 steps from zero to one in here. In this range, we have 20 steps because this is the resolution as I explained it. And every time we play a note, we go three steps up in this 20 quantized resolution thing. So every time I play a note, this modulation goes up here until we end up on the maximum value or we step over it. So we end up here on the first um, minimum value. So let's see how this looks like. And you can see on each iteration, like I told you before, we end up on different positions in this um, range or in this modulation range here. And um, depending on what you dialed in for increment and steps here, you end up on different positions with, which can lead to interesting uh, modulation signals. So output scaling, we uh, use here the bipolar thing, which works exactly like the first one. But now we go also here on the negative range. This looks like this. Okay, so pretty interesting. What you also can do is you can, instead of going here up increment steps of three, maybe we dial down the, um, the, the resolution here to four, which is much, much th smaller than 20, but we go up maybe five. <laughs> so let's see how this looks like. Or maybe three. And also in this way, you end up on different positions here every time you iterate through the cycle. Uh, because three barely fits into four steps, right? So uh, this would be six and six is not, doesn't fit into four. So we have two left over or, or the rest uh, two basically. So it's, uh, it's a math operation, <laughs> but you don't need to do that. You can just dial in your whatever and see um, what it comes out of it. But you can create interesting things with this, uh, even though you or if you use multiple of these with different, you know, increment and step sizes here and modulate different things. So this can lead to very interesting modulations. As you can see, every time I play a note, each of these modulations end up on different positions every time, but sometimes they overlap, sometimes they completely are in sync, and sometimes they... So it's like polyrhythmical, right? It's You can create interesting overlapping sequences. Um, okay, enough of that. Um, you can also, of course, here have a per voice option in the inspector for this. So you can apply this to multiple voices um, individually, which can also be interesting. And I think we have also covered everything. So this is here also the reset knob, so you can switch this to zero. Oh yeah, we have here this value thing. Um, so this is basically um, 
yeah, let's look how this how this looks like here. Um, switch to this one, scaling as value, and then we play some notes. I think this is a bit harder to explain here. Yeah? Um, so value is zero, one hundred, two hundred, or uh yeah it's basically um when you have three you have probably 300 per percent and if you have four you have 400 percent and so on so it's a absolute conversion of these numbers to percentage i think that's the that's, that's the best explanation for that <laughs> 